to talk about something I've been uh, researching a little bit lately here in Portland. Uh, Portland City Mayor has been talking about this, some other people in downtown have been talking about it. Last year, of course, I worked on a, uh, the Ansar Palace project, uh, just looking at doing another one here for somebody else who's, who's in need and much more deserving. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, we're looking at the, uh, it turned out that the mayor, here's their YouTube thing, uh, there's an organization called Micro Community Concepts here in Portland that, uh, they have a website, microcommunityconcepts.com, they want to do a pilot project that they figure it costs about a million to build. A lot of that's in land and land grant, so I don't think they need a million in cash. It's a big portion of this is land that the city already owns. The other thing is that the uh, city representatives have been talking about, uh, you know, how do we raise the money for that sort of a thing. One, I, I don't believe the money's needed all at once. Uh, it's nice to have it all at once. It's nice to have an earmarked budget for this type of thing. The thing is, Portland, Oregon, because of the tax situation and um, and our proximity to other states that have sales tax, Portland's become kind of a, a tourist destination in the Pacific Northwest, but it's kind of a seasonal situation. And and generally speaking, when the weather clears up, there's a lot of people that want to come here, they want to bike, they want to uh, uh, go to cheap restaurants with good food, they want to see the downtown, they want to shop without having to pay sales tax. There's a lot of good reasons to hang out in Portland, especially in the summertime. The other thing is that when it is hot here, it, it's not killer hot. And uh, for people that are mobile, they live in vans and RVs, it's really cool to be here. And when we focus on a lot of this stuff, a lot of people are talking about the homeless. Um, and of course, there's been city gentrification here. Uh, in fact, even some of the homeless camps have become gentrified, such as Dignity Village, uh, which is actually a, a micro home homeless camp at this stage in the game. It's basically a gentrified homeless camp where they have uh, uh, an acceptance committee and a wait list to get in. Uh, they, have, uh, they have a secure gate and they have a wait list to get in. Um, the, another much more visible one is the Right to Dream 2 downtown, uh, but of course the more gentrified one at Dignity Village, they don't even want to publicize too much where it is, although you can find that information on the internet to see what a relatively successful operation looks like in this, but they're also relatively cagey about publicity. That gets us to these folks at Micro Community Concepts, and I think they're onto something, but there's an even easier route. Governments, like everybody else, are in a financial pinch uh, like a lot of organizations, a lot of people these days. But what they're good at is making rules, breaking rules, and readjusting rules. My suggestion would be, and I found several plots of land around the city where this can work, is that the city institute a program of both paid and subsidized uh, campgrounds. Very easy to do. We're already a tourist destination for a lot of people in the RV crowd, but there's a shortage of uh, RV parks and camping, there's wait lists, uh, they're really not that cheap, and a lot of them, uh, there's no other way to put it, they're scummy, okay? And they take advantage of the fact that they've been able to have the zoning to be trailer parks and RV parks for a long time, and they charge a lot for what they give because there isn't much of any place else to go. Some of the places are just, they're, they're, they're filthy, they're dangerous. Um, they're, they're, it, it's not a good environment. Um, and that gets to the fact that if somebody tries to rezone or re-regulate some of those places, it would be very difficult. Now some of the things I noticed about these is that the newer, nicer, more expensive RV parks on the outskirts of town that consider themselves higher class what they've done is they've, they've been engineered to maximize profit. So they're basically like a giant parking lot with picnic tables. That's all they are. There's very little landscaping. They're not, they're, to me, in some ways, they're even more unsightly than the lower class ones because they, 